Fantasy Island is a unique amusement park in Ingold Mells, United Kingdom. This park is owned by the Mellers Group, who are most well known for their traveling rides. As a result, many of their portable rides find temporary homes at this park. But that is just the tip of the iceberg, or should I say pyramid? You see, this park is a giant pyramid in the center with all sorts of indoor rides, including a handful of dark rides. And this park also has two custom, large-scale Vacoma roller coasters. So in this video, I will rank this park's top 15 rides and attractions. Before starting the list, I need to note two rides that will be excluded. First, Magic Mouse XXL is a standard spinning wild mouse, but it was still under construction during my visit. Assuming it rides like the others out there, this would have likely snuck into the top 10. These rides have some zippy drops and great spinning in the second half. Second, Wild River Rapids is a little rapids ride. The elevated part offers some decent spinning. The second half is a few splashes that can get you quite wet. Which is a problem here because the water in this ride is absolutely filthy. If that is rectified, this would be worthy of a lower spot in the list. Starting off the list at number 15 is Jungle Adventure. This is a pony truck ride targeted more towards kids. But this is an enjoyable experience even for adults because of the visuals. It's enclosed in an atmospheric room with some trees and animal statues. They are basic, but there is something to see at all times. Then the rocking motion of the vehicles makes it feel like you're on an off-road adventure. And you get two laps as a bonus. Number 14, Magic. This is a relatively rare Huss spinning ride. It is an inverted break dance. The motion is fun, but this was not as fast as other installations I've been on. So I only got a few full spins, but those were disorienting when they occurred. Number 13, Mystical Dragon Mountain. This is a wet dry water slide. Most of it is in total darkness, which keeps you on your toes as you sway back and forth. There were not any notable drops though, and the speed was just okay. Number 12, Log Flume. This is a flume ride from WGH Transportation. The layout is on the smaller side, but it is located beneath Rhombus Rocket, which should yield cool visuals when that ride is operational. And there is a fine little drop at the end. The ride also has really murky water like the Rapids ride, but you barely get wet on this flume, so it's not nearly as big of an issue. Number 11, Fire Bowl. This is a small teacup ride, but it's notable because of how easy the tubs are to spin. This is probably the single most dizzying ride in the park if you really get the tub going. Number 10, Guardian. This is an interesting indoor experience. The attraction is quite secretive if you don't know what the ride system is. You have a well-themed queue leading to a castle. There, you are normally supposed to watch a pre-show, but that was unfortunately broken during my visit. You then board a robotic arm that spins you towards a screen. There, you watch a film where you battle a dragon. Unfortunately, the projection quality was rather low quality. The biggest issue was that it was really dark. The motion during the film is well synced, but fairly tame and limited. It does not use the ride system to its fullest potential, as the wildest part ironically is the start and end when you move between the screen and load platform. If they went back and modified this ride with a better projector and more action-packed movement, this would easily make the top 5. Number 9, Volcano. This is a 183 foot or 56 meter tall SNS space shot. The base is housed within a volcanic crater, and the launch caught me off guard because of the pneumatic sounds were masked by the music. That launch did not have too much power though, and I only got a little bit of airtime at the apex. I did get a great view of the surrounding area at least. What's most fascinating about this ride is that the seats tilted at one point, which is rare for an SNS tower. You can still see the hardware for this on the gondola, but that feature sadly no longer works. Number 8, Techno Jump. This is a Sartori bouncing ride. The start offers good laterals, 
while you spin at the lower level, then the main cycle bounces the gondolas repeatedly. The motion is abrupt, and every 4 or 5 bounces gives you a little air time. This one only operates in the forward direction, but it's cycled for a nice duration at least. Number 7, Toucan Tours. This is a monorail traveling above the pathways of the indoor area, so you see quite a bit of that space. Then it heads inside for a 1 to 1 half minute long dark ride sequence. This is the highlight. This bit has some nice lighting effects and statues. It feels like a cross of Indiana Jones Adventure and the Enchanted Tiki Room. Number 6, Sea Aquarium. This is a full-fledged dark ride. You ride in these spinning boats past these physical set pieces of these cartoony fish doing all sorts of tasks. The characters are not too sophisticated, but they are plentiful, and each scene is fleshed out and the attraction is plussed by a very catchy, upbeat soundtrack that plays on loop. You likely will have this earworm stuck in your head after riding. Number 5, Twister. This is a KT Enterprises twist. The ride spins at a faster clip than most Eli Bridge scramblers, so I got good lateral start to finish. The reason this attraction plays so high is because of the operator, she was constantly joking with guests over the microphone. Then as long as riders were singing or screaming, she kept the ride going. My cycle lasted nearly 9 minutes. Number 4, Odyssey. This is the world's tallest and fastest Vacoma suspended looping coaster. The sheer size of this ride is a sight to behold, but it is still an SLC, so it is on the rougher side. The head bangs are not too violent but they are plentiful on any directional change. I found a way to ride this comfortably though by stapling myself and jamming my head to one side of the spongy restraint. This allowed me to appreciate the steep first drop and several inversions. I particularly love the strong positive G's in the vertical loop and the sidewinder. The first few valleys also have great speed, but the pacing suffers mightily on the cobra roll and the turnarounds because they're too big for their own good. The ride also has a really bizarre history. In short, this ride was originally supposed to be a hypercoaster, and at one point, the restraints were changed after causing nipple burn on multiple women. If you want to learn all about this, check out my separate review for this ride. Number 3. Star Flyer. This is a 229 foot or 70 meter tall funtime swing ride. This one at decent speed and a long cycle. That gives you plenty of time to take in the sights, which is this ride's strength. It capitalizes fully on the location. You get a bird's eye view of the park and the nearby sea. And if you ride in a windy day like I did, your swing, which is held by tiny chains, will likely twirl through the air, adding another element of fear. Number 2. Arrington Flint's Island Adventures this is an ETF trackless shooting dark ride. This is a screen based shooter where you battle all sorts of characters. The aesthetic reminds me of something from Playhouse Disney, but it works in this case. It is cartoonish, but clear and consistent. Then there are plenty of targets in different environments, all of which are responsive. Then the ride is plussed by some physical details and statues in between the screens. And coming in, number one is Millennium. This is arguably the best classic Vacoma sit-down looping coaster. This one has a unique layout circling the park, so it's another ride relying heavily on the visuals. This helps compensate when the coaster has its tamer bits. But the layout does have some really good elements. The three inversions all have nice positive Gs, particularly those two vertical loops. And unlike a lot of older Vacoma loopers, this ride is shockingly smooth. I have a full review if you want to learn more, but this is the main draw for coaster enthusiasts to visit this park at this time. So that is how I rank the top 15 rides and attractions at England's Fantasy Island. What are your favorites of this park, or thoughts on any of the rides I mentioned? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos 
Eric Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.